singleness, right? So yeah. I, I've met single yeah. people who are truly content in their singleness, and I've met other single people who are not. And I've, and I've met single people who are content in their singleness and yet want to be married, right? So wanting to be married doesn't mean that you're not content. But it, contentment is to say, where I am, I am where I am right now, by the grace of God, he has things that he wants to do in my life in this stage. There are ways in which I can serve him uniquely. And so if this is where he has me, I'm going to live it to its fullest. I'm not just going to always be thinking, oh, if only I had this, or when I get to that next stage, then I'll be okay. I can actually be okay in the Lord right here, right now. Welcome to the Whitefields Community Church Sermon Extra, where we dig deeper into this week's sermon. This uh, sermon series is entitled Equipped to Serve. We've been uh, studying through the book of 1 Timothy, and we come to 1 Timothy 6, 1 through 10, with a sermon this week entitled How the Gospel Transforms Your Everyday Life. As a matter of fact, this week is our last week in the book of 1 Timothy. So, Pastor Nick, what are we doing after this? Yeah, after this, we are going to continue with 2 Timothy and then Titus in the, to finish up this series, but we're not going to do it right away because huh? we're coming right up on Easter pretty soon. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take two weeks before Easter to be looking at kind of the build up, the road, the path, you will, if you will, that Jesus took to Jerusalem, to the cross, kind of culminating with Good Friday, and then the resurrection of Jesus on Easter Sunday. And then after that, we're going to have two weeks of uh, follow-up after that. So if you will, it's, it's almost like climbing the mountain and then coming back down. And so it'll be two weeks on the front end, Easter Sunday, celebrating Jesus' resurrection, two weeks on the back end of that, and then we'll get back into 2 Timothy. And the idea with that is kind of looking at the things which led up to the crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus, and then looking at the things that happened after that, because that wasn't like a standalone event. There was a lot right. of buildup to it. There's a place where it says in Luke's gospel, it's Luke chapter 9, where it says, from that point, Jesus set his face like a flint to go to mm -hmm. Jerusalem. And it says in the Gospel of Matthew that that point when he did that, it corresponded with a time when Jesus and his disciples, they were up in the northern region of Galilee, the farthest northern part. It's called Caesarea Philippi, which is kind of the headwaters of the Jordan River where it comes out of there, what's now called the Golan Heights. And so from that area, Jesus said to his disciples, you know, who do people say that I am? And they said, well, some say you're Elijah, some say you're John the Baptist. And he said, well, how about you guys? Who do you say that I am? And Peter said, you're the, you're the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, well, it wasn't flesh and blood that revealed this to you, but my father who's in heaven. And from that moment, it says that Jesus began to tell them how he would go to Jerusalem and the things that he must suffer at the hands of the Pharisees and the, and the religious leaders and that he was going to die. But on the third day, he would be risen again. And Peter said, what are you talking about, Jesus? He said, don't you, don't you dare talk about that. He said, uh, knock it off, you know? Stop talking right. about all this death and stuff. That's not good. Not good. You're going to bum everybody out. And Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. Yeah, so we're going to be talking about that. Then as Jesus went on that path to Jerusalem, what happened? What happened in Jerusalem during the Passion Week? And then what happened with Jesus' post-resurrection appearances? That's what the whole, it's a mini-series, if you will, of about, was that, six messages in total mm -hmm. that will take place. So after that, then we will get back at the, towards the end of April, we'll get back and we'll do Second Timothy. That sounds great, actually. And uh, for those of you who are listening, we would encourage you to join us if you can at uh, here at Whitefields Community Church here in Longmont. Uh, FYI, if you haven't heard before, my name is Pastor Jason, and this is Pastor Nick, the lead pastor here at Whitefields Community Church. And we have uh, here an opportunity to kind of dig deeper, as we were saying, into our sermon. And uh, one thing that was brought up, it, and it's a really great topic to dig into, is the idea of contentment. Here in uh, the book of Timothy, more specifically in uh, 
verse 6 of the passage we were talking about in chapter 6, it really brings up the idea that godliness, godliness with contentment is great gain. So what is contentment? What can uh, Christians look for in the idea of contentment with the Lord? It's interesting because the context for contentment that he's talking about here mm -hmm. has to do with money. And, and the reason is because he's talking about what motivated, he's talking in the earlier verses, verse three through five, he's talking about what motivated these false teachers who are creating factions in the church in Ephesus, the factions which Timothy had been sent there to deal with and what was causing them to teach false things. He said, okay, on the one hand, it's, it's a lack of understanding. But on the other hand, there's also something more nefarious going on, if you will, and that's greed. They think that if they do this thing they're doing, you know, having their special teachings and things like that, which aren't actually biblical, but the, the goal behind them doing this is that they say, well, if we do this, then maybe we can get wealthy through this or we can get enriched, if you will. And in other words, Paul says they're after gain. This is referred to other places in the Bible as sordid gain, right? So speaking of like, uh, a desire to get wealthy in a way that is not God's will and not God's way. And he said, and the, the assumption they have is that if they can get wealthy, then they will be content. And Paul says, no, 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 you know what is real wealth? Let's flip the order of this. You're thinking gain or godliness leads to gain, which leads to contentment. And he says, no, no, no. How about godliness with contentment? That's actually true wealth. That's true gain. Now, the reason I say it's interesting that he correlates here contentment with wealth is because Paul also correlates contentment with wealth in his letter to the Philippians. In Philippians yeah. chapter four, yeah. Paul says, I have learned the secret to contentment. I've learned to be content in every situation I'm in, whether I have abundance. Now he's talking about money. Right? Because he's writing the Philippians because the Philippians have been supporting him financially. And in a way, he's saying, thank you for your financial support. I, my relationship with you doesn't depend on you giving me money, but thank you. But also, if you want to give me more money, I wouldn't mind that either. <laughs> yeah. And, but he does say this. He says, look, yeah. I'm not in it just for the gift. He even says it there. He says, I've learned to be content. I know how to be content. And he says, I know how to be content with having a little bit of money or with having a lot of money. He says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And we tend to use that verse like when we're going to go, uh, I don't know, <laughs> you know, do something that yeah. is hard, you know, like yeah. uh, we, we use it with sports, right? Like I can catch the football by Christ who That's strengthens right. me. And I, uh, I can pass the test I didn't study for because <laughs> I can do go. all things. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but no, the real approach this, he's talking about, you can, you can survive lack of resources, lack of money, uh, by the power of Christ who strengthens you. That's really the, and you know what else? Through the power of Christ who strengthens you, you can navigate the difficult waters of having abundance because that is wrought with many difficulties. Absolutely. So all that to say, contentment in this case certainly seems to have to do with contentment with financial, where you're at financially. And I would put it this way, that contentment is that idea of that feeling of being satisfied with where God has you. But where I think you can get off with the idea of contentment is that some people think that to be content, therefore, means that you cannot try or that it is wrong to want mm. to better your situation yeah. or to change, right? Well, this is where God's put you. Just be content with it. Well, I guess I'll be working at the gas station for the rest of my life, right? Like, right. look, if you, if you do, so here's, the, here's what contentment is. It's to say, if I work at the gas station for the rest of my life, that's okay, right? Because I have, I have strength through the Lord to do all things that he's called me to, and maybe this is will for my life. But it also means that if you say, I'm okay where I am right now, but I might be cool to do something else. And you can do that without needing to do it in order to justify your existence or to prove something. You know what I'm saying? It, it's, a, it's a matter of motivation and it's a matter of your heart. Can you be truly content with where God is? I think it, here's a good example. Singleness, right? So yeah. I, I've met single yeah. people who are truly content in their singleness and I've met other single people who are not. 
And I've, and I've met single people who are content in their singleness and yet want to be married, right? So wanting to be married doesn't mean that you're not content. But it, contentment is to say, where I am, I am where I am right now by the grace of God. He has things that he wants to do in my life in this stage. There are ways in which I can serve him uniquely. And so if this is where he has me, I'm going to live it to its fullest. I'm not just going to always be thinking, oh, if only I had this, or when I get to that next stage, then I'll be okay. I can actually be okay in the Lord right here, right now. But doesn't mean that I don't desire things. We read about good desires all the time. Mm -hmm. In this same letter, in chapter 3, Paul says, someone who desires the office of overseer desires a good thing. So there you go. Someone who uh, desires it. So it's okay to desire an office. It's okay to desire and work towards things. Mm -hmm. But contentment says, I don't have to have it in order to be okay. I can be okay in the Lord. Yeah. And, and so I think that's an important thing. Now, here's another interesting thought. I think there can also be a godly and correct sense of discontentment with certain things, right? And that's where you say, I see the way that things are, but I understand that it's not good that they are the way they are, right? I can mm -hmm. see, for example, that, yeah, you know, there's so many number of Christians in the world right now and, I, and that's cool, but it would be even cooler if there were more, if there were more people. I mean, in a sense, right, isn't that what drove Jesus to come to the earth, right? This, yeah, I, I want these people to be saved. Right. And I'm not content with them not being saved. And so there can be a godly sense of discontentment in the right things. Yeah. But contentment... Uh, is in the sense of trusting in God and being okay or enough with where God has you, trusting that he wants to use you and do things. I think that's the key here. Yeah, trusting that, that you're living in God's will and, it, you, know, and you want to be there yeah. you know, and being content there, but you also want God's will to maybe include something like a house or something. Yeah. But you know, you're content with being in God's will and God's will is here for you. Sure. So... I really love that. I think that's a really applicable for Christians today in every uh, walk of life, in every status, uh, not status, but uh, income circle, I guess. It really applies contentment, uh, especially as Americans, I think. Uh, we often always striving for more uh, in the West, but uh, I think that's very applicable. So thank you very much for uh, talking more about this and make sure that you smash the like button make sure you hit that subscribe uh really helps out with the algorithms and uh catch you next week